play with your host, Peter Donegan. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to the show this morning, World of Sport replay for the next hour. And uh, after that, of course, World of Sport with Sandy Roberts at 11 o'clock and then the final of the National Panasonic Women's Classic live from Brisbane here on 7 this afternoon as Seven Summer of Tennis continues and the final between, of course, Martina Navratilova and Pam Shriver. So a great day of sporting action here on Seven. Hope you can stay with us. We'll be taking a look at yesterday's Sandown Cup Day, the last of the big spring races. Of course, Greyhound Racing, the heats of the Melbourne Cup on Thursday night at Sandown Park and a big program of harness racing last night at Mooney Valley. But first, back to last night and the Tats Lotto numbers. As drawn here on Seven, draw number... 451, Division 1 prize pool, $1.415 million. And the numbers in numerical order were 5, 9, 23, 25, 37 and 45, with the supplementaries 27 and 42. And Ding Dong drew Super 66 last night at 8.30 and the numbers fell this way for a pool of over $388,000. 6, 5, 4, 9, 8 and 5. The best of British luck with Tats Lotto and Super 66 last night. Hope those numbers were lucky for you. And we'll see if your numbers were lucky at Sandown Park yesterday. Not the best of days for the punters, but we'll be back to take a look at the program from Sandown after this break. The big spring cups yesterday at Sandown Park, the Sandown Cup, $101,000 race and also of course the Sandown Guineas. And it was a good track for the eight race card. The matinee stakes opened up proceedings and the favourite here was Regal Flirt at 9 to 4. Your commentator is Bill Collins. They're racing and out wider on the track. Uh, Morell jumped away fairly and so did uh, Miss Me Blind showing a lot of speed. Regal Flirt's moving up towards them with Glowing Idol. Fiery Cinders and Emerald over on the inside is sharing the lead too with Silver Satellite when they settle down. Miss Me Blind, one of the leaders in the centre with Emirate at the 700 metre mark. Regal Flirt and Morell over on the outside. Fiery Cinders behind them from Naturally Green. Silver Satellite's holding the inside running at this stage and now followed by Blazing Car and then Moonfly, Glowing Idol. Bells of Tat is well out of it and Hot Mate is tailed off. Into the straight, Silver Satellite railed like a greyhound, got two lengths on Emirate and on the outside is Miss Me Blind. Morell and Regal Flirt coming out after the leader now and they're followed by Blazing Cara. Silver Satellite's rider went for the whip as Regal Flirt got alongside it now with 200 to go then Miss Me Blind running on well in the centre behind them is Emirate and Blazing Car and Morell, it's uh, still in front Silver Satellite with 50 to go it's hanging on to the lead, Glowing Idol's flying home but Silver Satellite drew away won it by a length and a half to Glowing Idol a mighty run second Third Regal Flirt, fourth was Miss Me Blind, and then came Morell, Fiery Cinders, Emirate. Behind them, Moon Fly, and then Natasha's Pride, Bells of Tat, and then Hot Maid. Naturally Green, second last, and Blazing Cara, last of all. Well, she's only a pony silver satellite, but a courageous performance at 12 to 1 to take out the opening race from the 50 to 1 pop glowing idol and Regal Flirt third at 9 to 4. The second event, the Foster's Lager, over 1,600 metres, Globetrotter, the favourite at 2 to 1. Racing. And Great Poet began well out in the centre with Glenn Morriston and Yusuk away nicely too and they were followed by Woking from Waratah Bay, Caesars right nearer the rails. Aiming with it and then Reject followed then by Sapphire Lad on the inside Flying Socks. They were followed further back Dance Boy and the Vagrant well back early with Globetrotter El Coran in front of them from Ankara and Ken's Fortune. Heading to the 1200, Great Poet a half length in front of Reject, a half away came Woking on the outside of Caesars right and one to Glen Morriston. Sapphire Bay getting right up along along the inside rail with aiming tracking it through and they're followed by Waratah Bay, a length to El Coran and the Vagrant. They were followed by Yusuk out deep from Anchor and then Globetrotter well back from Dance Boy, Ken's Fortune and Last Flying Socks. 800 to go, coming down the hill and Reject on the inside had taken a narrow lead from Great Poet and out three deep Woking. A length to Sapphire Lad and Caesars Wright both getting good runs from Ben Morriston. Aiming back along the rails about seventh from Waratah Bay and a length to El Coran. Then followed the Vagrant from Yasuk and Globetrotter awkwardly positioned and then came in Car of the outside from Dance Boy, Ken's Fortune and Flying Socks. They're entering the straight, 500 to go, and Warrant on the outside, Woking went up to join Great Poet. They dashed right away from Reject. 
then Caesar's right, Glenn Morrison to the outside of those, followed by Aiming. Uh, further back, El Coran is battling on, and Globetrotter looked hopeless. 300 to go, Caesar's right got to the lead, Aiming grabbed it quickly. Aiming took the lead, the vagrant on the outside, further back is El Coran, but Aiming is clear with 100 to go. From in second place, Caesar's right, and over on the outside of those horses, then the vagrant. Globetrotter coming home when it's all over, but Aiming wins it easily from Caesar's right. A half head away third, the Vagrant, followed by Globetrotter, Dance Boy. Then came uh, Ben Morriston behind them with Woking and El Coran. Nick Sapphire, Lad Ankara. Well back, Ken's Fortune, Yusuka. Gap the Great Poet, Flying Socks, Waratah Bay. And Reject was last to finish. First leg of a winning double for trainer John Ma and uh, jockey Pat Highland aiming at 7 to 2. Caesars right 14 to 1, the Vagrant 13 to 2. And Globetrotter coming home well, but I think he might need three laps. He was unplaced at 2 to 1. In the third, the Rawdon Stakes over a thousand metres. Bow time, the popular pick at 11 to 4. Away they go, and they've jumped away in a pretty fair line too. Uh, we're getting away fairly, Prince of Arrigan. Golden Lantern showing plenty of speed towards the outside, and Vane Meram. Also, Romantic Game has gone up towards the leaders as they settle down with Top of the Bay, and Spider's Bay going through along the inside rail. Up by the 700, Golden Lantern out wide in front of Bowtime, Romantic Game, Prince of Arrigan, and Vane Meram moving up to them. Top of the Bay's lost its place, Spider Bay next. Then Cossack Warrior around the outside of the next bunch of runners, and they're followed by Ruling Bounty, and uh, back towards the rear, Lord and Flash and drought. In the straight, Golden Lantern bounded away about two and a half lengths to Romantic Game. Cossack Warrior running on with Vane Moram and then Prince of Arrigan top of the bay and Mr Moe down the outside with a late run. Golden Lantern starting to weaken a little bit, coming after him, Romantic Game at the 200 metre mark. Here's Drought out wide with Mr Moe. Drought is flying, Romantic Game got to the lead. Drought trying to peg it back, Romantic Game and Drought, they go to the line and Drought's got up. I reckon Drought's got up and one of the nose to Romantic Game. Uh, third, Mr Moe. Fourth, Cossack Warrior. They were followed by Golden Lantern and Top of the Bay. Further back in the field is Spider Bay, Vane Moran, then Ruling Bounty. Next in the field, uh, further back, Bowtime and Gary's Jester. Prince of Arrigan, one of the last with Lodden Flash. Well, you don't see horses come from last in 1,000 metre races at Sandown too often. That was a top performance by Drought at 25 to 1. Romantic game 7 to 1, Mr. Moe at 4 to 1, and Bowtime the favourite finishing well back at 11 to 4. One of the big ones of the day, the Sandown Guineas race 4 over the metric mile, and the popular pick was Roman Artist at 5 to 2. Riders on their own, and away they go. And they've jumped on the outside. Uh, one of the first to get going out there was Classic Concept and Crossroads began well with Roman Artist. They were followed closely by New Atlantis moving through on the inside. Classic Concept, Crossroads and Roman Artist a length in front of uh, New Atlantis settling down from Ras Flyer. Then Wise Decision, Raj put over on the inside and they were followed then by Tavros in that bunch of horses. They were followed then uh, after a gap of two or three lengths by Pelotinsky and Sars Boris on the inside. Dynamic Dancer with them. Charge Affair well back, Shank Hill last back towards the rear, Acumen is second last and look alert at the rear. Past the thousand metres they go now and Crossroads led about a half length, the Roman artist working up on the outside, a length classic concept. New Atlantis ridden in behind them fourth from Dynamic Dancer, a length to Tavros, Ras Flyer, Prince Gaylord. Then Palatinsky followed by Wise Decision, Raj Put, Sars Boris, Shank Hill last taken to the outside from Acumen, Charge Affair and look alert. On the turn, 600 out, Roman Artist now moved up and got about a head in front of Crossroads, the two Sydney siders, they're three lengths in front of Dynamic Dancer. Then came Tavros, followed by New Atlantis, and on the outside, Palatinsky into the straight, and Roman Artist took the lead narrowly from Crossroads, four lengths to Prince Gaylord, Palatinsky starting to run on pretty well. Then Shank Hill Lass at the head of the others from Sars Boris, but Roman Artist broke clear, two in front of the 200 from Palatinsky, and Shank Hill Lass down the outside. Roman Artist clear, he's stopping a little bit, He's still two in front of Shankill Lass, grabbing him quickly. Roman Artis going up and down in the one place, and Shankill Lass is going to get up and grab it on the line. Shankill Lass and Nick to Roman Artis, Pelotinsky third. Fourth was Sars Boris, and then about three lengths to Tavros, Charge de Fair, Crossroads weakened badly from Acumen, Prince Gaylord. They were followed further back in the field by Ras Flyer, Wise Decision, Raj put a long gap to New Atlantis, and then came Classic Concept and Dynamic Dancer, and Look Alert was last. The only female in the race, and what a mighty filly she is. Shank Hill Lass at 9 to 2, taking out the guineas from the 5 to 2 favourite Roman artist Palatinsky, third at 7 to 1. 
The big one of the day, the $101,000 Sandown Cup, over 2,400 metres. And here, the Melbourne Cup winners of 1983 and 1984. Kiwi and Black Knight were the favourites, each of two, four to one. Mr Jazz bounced out in front on the inside from Show Glen and Dithias Rose and Thistle so Zephyr began well. So too did British over on the outside and Rain Guard in the middle of the field. Dropping out to the rear when they settle down into stride is Bread and Wine. Coming down by the 200 metre mark the first time, Dithias in front at a hand canter. A length to show, Glen followed on the inside, Rose and Thistle on the outside, Sir Zephyr. Puckle Harbour next, a length and a half, British followed by Frank Pledge, two to Rain Guard and Black Knight together. Then a length and a half to Mr Jazz, Bread and Wine and two lengths to Kiwi last. They're only cantering past the judge the first time. Dethius fighting for his head. He led by about a length now from Show Glen and Sir Zephyr the outside. Two lengths to Rose and Thistle settling down well on the rails fourth from Puckle Harbour and a length then to British. Wayand Rock next on the inside of Frank Pledge who's pulling two lengths to Rain Garden, a length further back Black Knight. Mr Jazz on its inside, a length to Bread and Wine and a length away is Kiwi. At the 1400, Dithia still reefing and tearing in front about a length and a half Sir Zephyr. On the inside show Glen and then two lengths to Rose and Thistle and Puckle Harbour. Two lengths to British, about two and a half, three lengths to Wayand Rock, a length further back Frank Pledge, a half to Rain Guard off the rail. One and a half to Black Knight, a length in to Mr Jazz on the rails, next Bread and Wine and two lengths to Kiwi. Past the 1200 and the leader still Dithius, one length to Sir Zephyr. A half show Glen and three parts to Puckle Harbour who's gone up fourth, two lengths to uh, Rose and Thistle. A length and a half British, three lengths to Way and Rock, two and a half lengths to Frank Pledge, a half to Rain Guard. Two to Black Knight, they're under restraint back there still with Bread and Wine, a length Mr Jazz and a length to Kiwi. They've got 900 to go, still Dithius in front, three parts to Sir Zephyr has travelled okay. Third show, Glen on the rails from Puckle Harbour. Rose and Thistle on the inside, looking for a run. Around it goes British hard ridden now. Two lengths to Way and Rock, a couple of lengths to Rain Guard and Frank Pledge. Two to Black Knight, Bread and Wine, Mr Jason. Two lengths last is Kiwi. On the turn, 600 to go. And here's a charge for the lead. Sir Zephyr took over from Dithius. Coming around the Puckle Harbour and British. Rose and Thistle getting off the fences next and then Way and Rock. Into the straight and Sir Zephyr and Puckle Harbour from British. Two lengths away. Rose and Thistle to the outside, then Rain Guard further back in the field, then Kiwi pulled to the outside, and Black Knight with 200 to go, Sir Zephyr still in front of Puckle Harbour, Rain Guard the outside, Puckle Harbour got to Sir Zephyr now, Rain Guard on the outside in third place, Sir Zephyr fighting back, Puckle Harbour just got his head in front, and Puckle Harbour's going to win it, about a neck to Rain Guard, very close for third between... Uh, uh, on the outside of those, on the inside, Kiwi flashing up uh, with Rain Guard in that bunch. And uh, they were Sir Zephyr, of course, finishing second on the rails. And they're followed by Mr Jazz, Rose and Thistle, British. Then the Way and Rock further back, Dithius well out of it. Black Knights run second last. And last of all is Show Glen. It's a big upset in the Sandown Cup. Puckle Harbour at 33 to 1. Colin Alderson trained horse taking out the money from Sir Zephyr at nines and Kiwi. Coming from last, the 4 to 1 equal favourite Black Knight finishing well down the track and post equal at 4 to 1. The sixth event was the Mercedes Benz over 1600 and the favourite Normandy Bay at 9 to 4. And away they go. We caught them pretty well. Princess Del Sol took a little while to get going and Torval, one of the early leaders with Sweet Dream Lady. Coralie Lass on the outside and then Ming Princess when they settle down into stride. The leader now quickly, Sweet Dream Lady, two lengths of the 1400 to Ming Princess and going fast. On the outside, Coralie Lass, a length and a half, Torval, two to seek a fortune. Then Normandy Bay, the rails, a half length Bay of Sterling, three lengths Princess Jade and Princess Del Sol. As they went past the 1100 and the leader is Sweet Dream Lady, a length and a half to Ming Princess, a length and a half Coralie Lass. A length into Torval going okay and Bay of Sterling went up quickly now. Two lengths Normandy Bay and Seeker Fortune, two to Persian Jade and Princess Del Sol. 800 out down the hill, Sweet Dream Lady, a half length Mim Princess, one to Torval, beautifully positioned. A half to Bay Sterling and three deep now Coralie Lass. A length further back Seeker Fortune. Normandy Bay the rails, a length to Princess Del Sol and Persian Jade. They're packed right up at the 600 where Sweet Dream Lady joined in front by Ming Princess about who's quickly gone to the lead. A length to Torval is trailing it through. Bay of Sterling pushed wide. Two to seek a fortune. Hard ridden now from Normandy Bay. Then Persian Jade. Into the straight. Ming Princess clear. Two lengths to Torval out after it from Bay of Sterling. Sweet Dream Lady and seek a fortune. With 2.50 to go and Ming Princess still two in front but Torval's running to it now. They're clear of seek a fortune. Bay of Sterling and Normandy Bay. Torval got to the lead with 200 to go. Shot away from Ming Princess and then seek a fortune running on followed by Normandy Bay. 
but Torval in front as they get near the line. Seeker Fortune running home spiritedly on the outside, but Torval goes on to win three parts of a length. Seeker Fortune, head away third, Ming Princess, and they're followed by Bay of Sterling. Next, Normandy Bay, a good gap to Princess Del Sol, well back Persian Jade, Sweet Dream Lady next, and last of all, Coralie Lass. Most consistent galloper, Torval, 7-2, Seeker Fortune, a good honest run, second at fives, Ming Princess, third, 14s, and Normandy Bay, the favourite, running fifth at nine to four. GJ Cole Stakes was the seventh event, last leg of the Quadrella, 1,400 the journey, and a wide open betting affair with Knight of Avon, the popular pick at five to one. They're racing. Mandira Twile a little slow with Knight of Avon and Handcrafter dropped out towards the rear. Jurisdiction one of the early leaders with Miner's Man and uh, follow the light away well from Viva Vane too. Kentish going up to join them now and they were followed back behind those horses by Regal Advice. Richfield's Lad and Todd Wilkes out wide from Beaumont Babe. Then uh, further back in the field Handcrafted from La Benatar Full Blaze Magic and then came Knight of Avon, Mandira Twile and Sports Ruler. At the 900 metres Miner's Man about a half length of Kentish and a length further back on the outside Todd Wilkes, a length and a half jurisdiction travelling well. One to Viva Vane Regal Advice, Richfield's lad and then two to Beaumont Babe Court, deep around Follow the Light and then Hand uh, Crafted then a length further back La Benatar followed by Full Blaze, Knight of Avon trying to sneak up on the fence from Sports Ruler and Mendira Twile dropping further afield on the corner 500 out Miner's Man the leader left the rails hung out badly, Jurisdiction got a beautiful run to go up and join the leaders so did Regal Advice, Kentish is there Wider out, Todd Wilkes, Viva Vane, and they were followed further back by Magic. Beaumont Bay threading its way through from Handcraft and then La Benatar. Jurisdiction, the leader at the 200 with Regal Advice on the outside. Follow the light. Handcraft are trying to get through with Knight of Avon pushing up and Beaumont Bay out wide. Jurisdiction in front, Knight of Avon grabbing it and Beaumont Bay out wide as they hit the line. Knight of Avon. Knight of Avon's won it a nose to Jurisdiction, a head away third, Beaumont Bay. They were followed then by Follow the Light, just missed a place. Next is Handcrafted, Miner's Man, La Benatar. Next in the field, Viva Vane, Sports Ruler, Magic, Richfield's Lad, Full Blaze, Todd Wilkes, then Regal Advice, Mendira Etoile and Kentish. Only a short half head in it and Jurisdiction got the verdict at 11 to 1 from the fast finishing Knight of Avon at 5 to 1 in favourite and Beaumont Bay flashing home to run third at 9 to 1. In the last event, well, it certainly had been a dirty day for punters coming to the final race, and they plonked on two horses, Plush Princess and Rest Dancer, three to one each of two. They're racing, caught them in a good line too, and Shady Palm a little bit slow over on the inside, and Digger's Lass going to be one of the early leaders. Bevro's Rest Dancer is away well with Portray. Then on the outside, Plush Princess, they were followed by behind those horses, Digger's Lass. Next in the field, Reach for the Moon, and they were followed then by round the outside, High Gorgeous from Lady Padru, Groby Azar, Henrietta well back with Oh What Leg, Shady Palm, and Rob Along. At the thousand, the leader, Bev Rose, a link to Digger's Lass, a link for the back, Portray right up there today on the outside. Rast Dancer with a run of the race on the inside of a bunch of horses there at this stage. They were followed uh, closely two lengths away by Warren and High Gorgeous round the outside. Reach for the Moon is up near the lead, and they're followed by Lady Padru, Groovy Azar, Montelba. Well back now is Digger's Lass, and back with it at this stage, Henrietta and Shady Palm, and Romp Along is last. On the turn, 600 to go. There's a wall of them across the track. High Gorgeous four deep, joined Reach for the Moon, Bev Rose, Rast Dancer looking for the run, Digger's Lass in the centre. Plush Princess also badly needing a run, and they were followed then by Lady Padru to the outside. Digger's last reach for the moon, tackled by High Gorgeous. Rass Dancer can't get out. Plus Princess getting clear. On the outside now, Lady Padruga swapped them all, and here comes Montelba. Lady Padruga in front with 100 to go, racing away from Montelba and Plus Princess. Lady Padruga in front, Montelba trying very hard to catch it as they near the line, but Lady Padruga's won it. Ahead to Montelba, ahead away third, Plus Princess. Then came Warreen with O Watt Legs and Shady Palm behind them, Rash Dancer and Portray. Next is Ruby Azar, further back Daily Spirit, Reach for the Moon, Romp Along, Digger's Lass, then High Gorgeous, and among the last, Bev Rose and Henrietta. Good win to the outsider, Lady Padruga, 15 to 1 in the last from Montelba, a game effort at 10s, Plush Princess, 3 to 1 equal favourite, and Rash Dancer, the unplaced equal favourite, at 3 to 1. So it wasn't the best of days for the punters at all yesterday at Sandown Park. Not one favourite successful, but uh, still, as always, next week, isn't there? Let's take a look now at the doubles from around Australia yesterday. The extra double at Melbourne on 12 and 16, 15, 35. 
Daily Double on the combination 13 and 14, 1,096.65, and the Cod Rally was a smaller dividend on 362 and 5, $959.95. In Sydney, the extra 6 and 10, 61.20, and the Daily Double 3 and 5 paid $5.55. Adelaide yesterday, extra double, 4 and 13, 25, 45. Daily double, 1 and 8, $13.90. Provincial racing at Seymour, the extra, 11 and 1, $17. Daily double, 2 and 6, $37. And the quadrilla on 2, 8, 6 and 1, $461.65. And, and that was the story of Sandown Cup Day as you saw it live here on 7 yesterday afternoon. We'll be back after this break to take a look at Greyhound Racing incorporating the heats of the Melbourne Cup from Sandown Park. So the run.